Each day, the soul of our nation and the integrity of mankind and the unity of the faithful is at stake. The crises will be fundamentally about our chances and our choices of whether those who call themselves leaders are ready to go back to the principal teachings and actions and whether such a call might be taken up by persons within and beyond our leaders and by those whose faith-based teachings guide their actions. Instead of falling into and creating more political polarization and self-serving actions, we need righteousness and justice to supersede our own ambitions. Many among us have come to believe that what is important to us must be spoken without any consideration whether it's right or just, and whether or not it would wound or bruise somebody else. The guidepost must be, is it right? Is it true? It is my desire that we speak truth, even when it is difficult, and even in those times when we are despised or misunderstood. Friends, let us strive to not let any unwholesome talk come from our mouths, but only that which is helpful for building others up, that it might benefit those who will listen and those who will work for the good of the whole. Let us take a moment to reflect as we invoke the Holy Spirit. Father God, God of righteousness, God of peace, God of justice, you've called us, you've called us all to love our neighbors, to engage in the work of justice on behalf of the least of those among us. In obedience, we must always be mindful of the needs of those around us. We pray for your presence and your guidance, and we ask on behalf of families, our leaders in our community, that through our discussions and our deliberations, and through our service, that justice and peace prevail. Amen. Thank you. Call this meeting to order. Uh, I see we have a, uh, a quorum. Would like to get an approval of the agenda. Uh, Madam President, I would like to, um, under number 9F, have that one removed, uh, to be vote not removed, but to be voted on separately. Okay. 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 Uh, are you going to make a motion that oh, we accept I make, it? Yes, I make, I'm sorry. I was looking at you all. I, I make a motion that you all, I'm sorry, I move that we uh, accept the vote on number 9F to be voted on separately. Okay. Second. Second. Any uh, further comment? Those in favor, please signify by signal of hands. The agenda. Okay. And at this point, if we could all please stand. We have. Who have we got?
liberty and justice for all. Order. Go. Ready. Cut. Color guard. Dismissed. We have a big hand for the Jeff Davis in your ROTC. So good afternoon. Um, as has been my habit here lately, I, I'd like to let you just inform you of some of the good news going on in the district. Uh, Macmillan International Baccalaureate Academy will receive a $10,000 grant from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama this week. The money will be used for programs to help students develop, develop ha healthy habits. So we're thankful to Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, and Macmillan is not the only school to get this grant. While Blue Cross had their checkbook out, they also uh, are presenting $10,000 healthy school grant to Brubaker Primary School this week also. Uh, MPS, this sounds like so much fun, it makes me want to be a student again, but uh, MPS is sponsoring a math scavenger hunt this Saturday from 10 till noon at Eastdale Mall uh, for students and parents in grades K through 8. There will be a random drawing from the participants for three $250 uh, ice skating uh, parties sponsored by the mall. And it sounds fun. A scavenger hunt with numbers sounds very good. Uh, and last in the around and about, LAMP High School is hosting 19 German exchange students for the next week. And it's a chance for our students and their students to get to know each other and find out the things we actually have in common. There are good things happening at MPS every day. Um, Mr. Salter, we have some uh, recognition. We have some more good things good. to talk about. Uh, Madam President, board members, superintendent, Mr. Roller and visitors, we welcome you all. Tonight we celebrate things going on in our schools. We want to start with some teachers and students who are on the cutting edge of technology. Can those who took part in Innovate AFITC please come join us? Don't be shy. Just jump right on up. Come right through here, please. <laughs> we have with us tonight uh, instructors Libiata White from Lanier and Melissa Smith from Park Crossing, as well as several students. They took part in Innovative AFITC, the premier collaboration competition for science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM, and also cyber security. Special congratulations to the team from Lanier for winning top high school. The students there, Kayla Hill, Janaea Johnson, and Teresha Green were also on the team with IT industry professionals and won an award for their pitch presentation. So congratulations for that. Other MPS students who took part were Roger Steele, Bray Scott, Joseph Russell, Gabe Bass, Miles Chatham, Taylor Washington, and Jawan Huh. Uh, some of them were, are here and some of them aren't. <laughs> so we are glad for the ones who could be here. Let's give them a great big round of applause, shall we? Thank you very much. Next, we have Carver High School uh, teacher who's been named a Fulbright Scholar. Did Alexandra Price make it? Is she here? Mr. Hall? 
Gary Hall? He's here. I'm not the full Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> she ran into some car trouble, I understand, and we hate that. But Miss Price is one of only 13 U.S. citizens who will travel overseas as part of the Fulbright Distinguished Awards in Teaching Short Term Program. She'll be stationed in Uganda, and her program is titled Introducing Learner Assessment Techniques in a Ugandan School. The Fulbright program is sponsored by the U.S. government and allows U.S. K-12 teachers to share their experiences around the world. Receiving a Fulbright award is a very prestigious distinction. Let's all wish her safe travels through Mr. Hall and uh, give her, her, through Mr. Hall, a big round of applause. <laughs> just, just tell her to watch the video and she'll get, she'll get the applause. <laughs> Very much, very much, very much. Okay, exit stage right. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Next, we have 12 students who rank among, rank among the top scholars in the nation. Will the National Merit semifinalist and principal Matthew Munson from Lamp High School please come and join us? Just come right on down. We don't bite, well, not much. So come on down. <laughs> These students, not that far. Here we go. Back up. Back up. We're in, we're in good shape. There we go. Okay, good. These students are among 16,000 nationwide who are in the running for more than $32 million in National Merit Scholarships this spring. It should be pointed out that LAMP has the fourth highest total of semifinalists in the state. Now, the reason that's important is LAMP usually graduates about 100 students each year. Some of the other students in the state that had National Merit semifinalists uh, who finished below LAMP uh, have many, 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 many more graduates in the hundreds of graduates. So we're to be uh, very thankful for our program at LAMP and congr congratulate these students. And Mr. Munson is going to introduce them for us. Yes, I will. And I, I will call the names of all of our honorees, even those not present tonight. And I would ask that we all hold our applause uh, till the end. These are in no particular order. Uh, Miss Terry Kim. Just wave. <laughs> Jay Wan Wu. Sunmi Choi. Micah Boone, Yana Beasley, Sarah Kim, Dylan Davis, Pearl Kotzenbach, Mary Olivia, Mary Olivia Dudley, excuse me, Mary Olivia, Felix Wong, Alalade Harrison, and Eric Messina. Let's give them a big round of applause. And our board president has certificates for each of you if you'll. Uh, Give, give those to uh, your fellow classmates, and uh, Mr. Munson will take care of anybody who's not here, okay? Perfect. But these, this is, uh, Mr. Munson, do you want to say anything about these scholars? Uh, yes, I, I will say that um, the, these kids are preparing for the next round, which is the finalist round. Uh, typically, LAMP does produce uh, national merit finalists, which allows these children to compete uh, with others on a national scale for very prestigious scholarship dollars. Uh, many of these children right now are deciding where they're going to spend the next four years for their higher education. Um, and at our reception, uh, I asked every child to tell uh, our dignitaries for our reception where they were attending. And we had everything from Yale, Harvard, Stanford, Auburn, Alabama, Carnegie Mellon, Vanderbilt. So when we truly say that we're trying to prepare kids uh, for a college career and beyond, I can say without a doubt at Lamp High School we are, and our proof is in this pudding. So. Thank you for your continued support for our children as well. Thank Congratulations you. again to all of you. Thank you very much. Now it's time to recognize our employees of the month with Jason Goodson and Cindy Carter, along with Bobby Crew and Principal Marcus Roberts. Join us. Was Mr. Crew here or did he, he leave you standing by yourself? He left you standing by yourself? Okay. A lot of you probably recognize Jason. He's often the first person you see when you walk into the building. He was hired in 2016 and assigned to Lee High School before joining us here at the central office in 2017. He always demonstrated a willingness to go the extra mile to assist students, visitors, and employees. In addition to his duties, he works extracurricular activities <laughs> such as, such as um, 
uh, ball games and MPS sponsored meetings and activities. But the thing that really made him our employee of the month um, was uh, something he did a few days ago, excuse me, or a couple of weeks ago, actually. There was a person, in, one of our visitors in the parking lot had a flat tire. It was 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, as you all know. <laughs> And Jason went out there and he changed the tire for this person. And so we're, we're very pleased to have so many wonderful employees. And Jason is certainly an example of that. And we talk about what we had for lunch every day, which is a, which is a lot of fun too. A lot of fun. I won't tell you what he has for lunch. It's not really something you never mind. Okay. And so and next we have Miss Carter. Miss Carter is a first year teacher who's already had an incredibly big impact on Wares Ferry Road Elementary. She's adaptable, fun-loving, and hardworking, and she encourages her students to work beyond their academic skill sets. Principal Marcus Roberts said, we are happy to have Ms. Carter join the Wares Ferry team with her infectious, kind spirit, and great classroom manner. So congratulations, and... And in addition to the certificate suitable for framing, they also get a $25 gift card from Target, and that's courtesy of the good folks at Baptist South, and we'll have an article in the newspaper that will highlight them. Right, Krista? Absolutely. Fantastic. So we appreciate them very much. Okay. We'd like to also welcome a special community partner who's done a lot to benefit the students at MPS, Tracy Howell, if you'll please join us. We would like to show our gratitude with a certificate suitable for framing to honor Ty and Dahl and the organization that's done so much for MPS. And then she has a special presentation as well. Mr. Watts' eyes lit up, so you can come up and come on, come get the check. Thank you so much. We we need more partners like Ty and Dahl. Thank you. Scott. Yeah. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And finally, we have a presentation from Miss um, Cherie Stokes from MGM Tech. Thank you, Mr. Salter. 
Uh, we're very happy to announce the fact that we've brought uh, Tech MGM, as well as a number of organizations, have brought a Montgomery Best Robotics competition into Montgomery this year. This will be the first time that Montgomery is actually hosting that competition, bringing about a thousand future engineers into Montgomery. We only had one team previously out of MPS that was actually competing in robotics. We now have six teams throughout middle schools and high schools that are going to compete in robotics. And that's BTW, Park Crossing, JD, Lanier, McKee, as well as one more, another middle school, Johnny Carr, that are all competing this year. So one, thank you for the continued support that we've had amongst the district, but also from a technology perspective, it's huge for us in Montgomery to be able to grow by that leap and bound in just one year of announcing that. And now we're looking to have more schools that will actually compete. So thank you for the continued support. And we look forward to continuing to work with you on those STEM areas. Thank you. OK, we are at the point in our agenda for scheduled public comments. And I would remind you of the rules and procedures for this. Um, requests must be made in advance in writing to the superintendent's office by 4.30 on the Tuesday preceding the date, uh, the meeting date. Requests must have specified the nature of the business to be taken up with the board and the name of the person who will address the board to be added to the agenda. Communications must be respectful. Discussing specific student or employee matters will not be allowed. Individuals who have concerns that are inappropriate to be solved in this venue are welcome to seek a problem-solving meeting with the superintendent. Immediate feedback by the board may not be provided. However, you may be contacted for follow-up by the superintendent or designee. Public comments may not exceed three minutes. The board chair has full authority to terminate the remarks of any person whose comments contain personal attacks, exceed the time limit, or are otherwise inappropriate. A speaker may be considered disruptive who continues to speak when their allotted time has ended, when asked to stop speaking by the board chairman, or is otherwise inappropriate. If a person fails to comply when asked to terminate comments, he or she will be escorted to their seat out of the auditorium and or off of MPS property, depending on the level of disruption. And basically, the same rules will apply for citizens' comments later on. And we will start with Ms. Brown. Thank you. And I want to thank whomever put this in my box, telling me all about you as board members. So I can read up on it and know who to contact on whatever I need to contact you on. Thank you, whomever did it. <laughs> I, I've also called and asked, morale is kind of low among your uh, faculty members at the different schools. They, they seem to be having a problem with listening to you. And I think with what Dr. Coleman started off with today, if she would go into some of these PTAs and give that to them and let them know what is expected. Maybe we can get them back interested in what's going on within our public schools. I have some information from teachers at Park Crossing. They said that the birds are coming in in the roof of the building. They say it's located um, back of the school, A wing is going into the courtyard. So you know they had to write it because I didn't know it. Um, and they said that you need to get somebody out there because it's really loud and they're having a problem with it. And they are still asking, and I'm asking, where are the counselors with all of these little elementary children that parents are calling me about getting them back in school, they're getting suspended. They're also having problems with teachers leaving I think they said that uh, this is the third teacher getting ready to leave from Park Crossing. So whomever has Park Crossing, maybe you need to go out there and talk with the faculty to find out what the problem is and see if you can get some of it resolved 
because 39 and 40 children in a classroom, that's pretty loaded. And they said that on some days, the children are in the classroom without a teacher. So these are things that were placed in my mailbox. These are pictures that was placed in my mailbox. And we need your help. If you got the school, as they showed me, you got the school, go to the school. Do something so that they recognize you and come to these meetings and support you. You need their support because the morale is low. It's going low up. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ms. Charbonneau, I believe you're up next. Good evening. My name is Jean Charbonneau, and I am the 2019 2020 FAME Board President. We are a 501c3 organization and we exist to support the students, teachers, and programs at Booker T. Washington Magnet High School. Our mission, in short, is advocacy and fundraising. We raise funds to supplement essential programs, buy supplies, and provide experiences that MPS has never, quite honestly, been able to support, but are vital to the educational experience these children deserve. I have two requests for the board tonight. First, we, the FAME Board, have started work on a collaborative event that will involve the th three arts magnet schools. There's no record nor memory of a collaborative event being organized to feature the progressive, successful opportunities and impressive development students achieve when their overall education includes an emphasis on arts education. Our goal is to conduct this event during the upcoming application window, which should open in January. There's a persistent rumor that the application window may be significantly shortened this year. In the past, it has been as long as six full weeks, beginning immediately after the Christmas holiday and extending into early or mid-February. I caution personally that shortening this window to anything less than four full weeks will be perceived negatively as a disservice to our local population and to our transient yet talented military and corporate families who, for the duration of their stay in Montgomery, are eligible residents and taxpayers. A shortened window will result in depressing the volume of applications which some have suggested might be the underlying intent. Please make and publish a decision on the Magnet School application window as soon as possible, please. We will help get the word out. We want to work together through public and private social media forums and in the military and corporate communities. Many, many remain unaware of the process and curtailing the window exacerbates the perception that the magnet schools are understaffed and undervalued in our system. My second and final request is regarding the acquisition of the Holy Cross Episcopal Elementary School campus reported to be the future home of BTW. A public open forum meeting with the superintendent has been requested and acknowledged, but as I understand it, it won't be scheduled until after the contract for the purchase has been fully executed. This is another date we would like to have sooner rather than later. Thank you. In summary, two events, magnet window application and parent meeting for relocation. Thank you. Uh, is Ms. Michelle Krosky here? Michelle Krosky. Um, okay, Ms. Fran Thomas. You know, while I stood up here and I listened to all this glorious thing about these children, it was fantastic, and I do appreciate that. But there's one subject that I've not heard cover, and that's special education. 
special education in Morning View is chaos. We have five years old to 11 years old in a classroom and there's 14 children in there. And it is not working. I need an appointment with the superintendent to see what can be done about this. Because I've tried three times to have an appointment with you and I, I've not been able to. So personally right now, I would like to have an appointment with you to see what can be done. Uh, it's, it's not only my child, it's 13 other children. The kindergarten there and the first grade there have 10 or 11 students per classroom, per classroom. Last year, they had 18 to 22 students per teacher, per classroom. So I can only imagine that they took away, and I'm not sure, but I can only imagine that they took away from special education to give to, should we say normal or whatever, you know, to, to help them because they're only 10 to 11 kids per classroom and I've done my homework, I know it. And uh, we need the special education that we had last year, which was six students per teacher with two helpers. My son was a straight A student. Y'all don't want to know what's happening this year, so I'm not going to say. But please, please give me a call and set me up an appointment with you, Dr. Moore. Please. Have you talked with the director of special ed? Uh, yes, I've talked directly to them. They can't do anything. They told me HR was in charge okay. of this. I will have a talk HR, with her, and then I'll have a talk with you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I want. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I, I'm going to respectfully request that this light be turned out. Thank you. I can continue to record, though. I can now continue to record. You can record. I just don't want the light as a distraction. Light the light distracted you, I'll turn it off. Thank if you. Um, we have uh, the citizens' comments uh, have to do with uh, items on our agenda, and the first person up is Philip Hammond. Philip Hammond, not here. He was here. Okay. All right. Um, Pastor Jamal Brown. Like I said last night, don't experiment on our kids on the west side of Montgomery, Alabama. I said it last night. Mr. It Brown, went, could it, you confine yourself to the podium, confine please? Confine myself to the podium. Okay. Thank you. Let me confine myself to the podium. She said uh, the president of the board told me to confine myself to the podium. Five black women on that board. Okay. I can't use that. I can't say that. Well, five African-American women on that board. I can't say that either. And you got only two colonizers that is making a decision for a majority black city in Montgomery, Alabama. Well, 146 thousand folks in Montgomery. The Montgomery Education Foundation ran by, they put, he, he don't even run it. He is the face of, he out of town. Y'all know who he is, I'll talk about it tonight. We don't want y'all experiment on our kids on the west side of town. If there's a problem inside of the system, you need to fix the system yourself. We are tired of you playing with our kids. We are sick and tired of you all playing with our kids. You got money and everything to give away, give away to other schools across the town. But you want to come on the west side and experiment on kids that are living in poverty. And need help. You can turn my mic down all you want back up. I don't care about that mic. I can talk without the mic. But we don't want you coming to the west side, taking historical black school and turn it into a charter school. You try to put a band-aid on the problem, and you wrong. You wrong. You wrong, Superintendent. And everybody you represent is wrong. You don't represent Gillsville, Ridge, Press, Washington Park, or none of those schools. You don't know what those kids be going through. None of you 
all on this board do. And I pray and hope that black folks in Montgomery get enough sense to vote due out of office. Because guess what? If you were doing your job, Mr. Roller would be at the end of the table now. If y'all was doing y'all job, you worthless and you wrong how you do the church. And I'm going to warn you as a representative from heaven. God ain't going to let you sleep when you praying with his children. Now remember that. God ain't going to let you sleep. Now you can look at me funny as long as you want, but I'm going to continue to preach the truth. I don't mind going to jail. I don't mind dying. I don't mind nothing. Don't put no child school on the west side. Put them on the east side see how it works first. Then come back to us and ask us do we want. And then we'll decide. But don't experiment on us. We ain't talking. Get it, kids. Class dismissed. It's AJ, AJ Hayes. Hello? Yes. So, thank you all for opening up comments to citizens, to parents. Um, I'm AJ Hales. I'm a parent. I have uh, three children, um, ages three, six, and seven years old. Um, I'm a realtor. And my husband and I relocated to Montgomery almost two years ago now. And um, I'm going to give you all a little bit of a backstory. Um, our oldest son was in kindergarten. Uh, in Baton Rouge. He was in a blue ribbon magnet school making straight A's. When we relocated here, his teacher told us to make sure we get him tested for gifted when we moved here. Um, and I'm giving you that backstory so you know about one of our kids and how he was performing. Our other child was in K-4. So we relocated here and based on what we'd read, just like I informed my clients, based on what we read and the scores of the schools that we were zoned for, we made a decision to put our children in private school. Um, after being in private school, I was doing a lot of extra homework just to feel like I was keeping them up to par. And I said, well, if I'm doing this much work, I may as well put them in public school. I'm a product of public school. I went to college on a full scholarship. My husband's military, went to college on a full scholarship. And I'm kind of nervous, I guess, because this is it's personal. It's personal because the decision that you all make, it not only impacts me as a parent, it impacts my livelihood to be able to sell homes to be able to not have families that want to go outside of Montgomery. Parents, they want to live here. Military, when we work with them, they want to live here, but they can't afford private schools. Um, and they're concerned as their children matriculate what their options will be. So going forward, we put our kids in um, public school. I was on the PTA. I was room mom for both of my kids, because that's how I roll. I wanted to be involved. And um, we saw with both of our children our oldest, the one who we've been told to get him tested for gifted, first quarter he made straight A's, just like normal. But then he got disengaged. Um, his scissors got stolen. His headphones got stolen. If you ask him to this day about the school he was at, he'll say, I, I don't like going there. My teacher told me to shut up. Now, we had a really good relationship with the principal, and I talked to them throughout this process, and we ended up having to pull our boys out. And I'm telling you that because that is the story of so many parents um, who want to support public school. I want to support public school. I do. And when I say support, though, I don't want to support it with just my finances or my time. I want to be engaged. I want to have my kids there. I don't want to pay to put three kids in private school, to be honest. I prefer to have public school as my option, not just magnet, but public schools in general. And based on my experience in Louisiana, um, based on associates that I have that are literally principals of charter schools that teach in charter schools. Um, I have volunteered in an after school program when I was in Louisiana that was a charter school and I have seen them do well. And so I'm here because I am 100% of not just charter schools, but specifically of the conversion charter school. Okay. Because the facts now. are, time is all up. this time, well I said I support it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all very right. much. Thank you all so much. Uh, Pamela West. Hey, 
evening. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I, on the other hand, oppose um, conver conversion charter schools for MPS. I'm hoping that we are looking at the best interests of our children, putting them in the forefront of our minds. My idea is if the foundation has this great curriculum, have these finances and everything, why can't they just partner with MPS? Because we do partnership, we do with example, SRB came in as a partner, trained teachers and so forth. So if they have this great, wonderful curriculum, why don't they partner with MPS and possibly try it out at the school by training some of the teachers and we can see actually if the curriculum works instead of just automatically um, having them to <coughs> convert the school to a charge. Also, with our board, my understanding is that you all will oversee the charter school. So in my mind, if you're having a slight difficult problem overseeing the current school system, then you're adding another system on top of that. It looked like it's one of those areas going to lack, either our school it's going to lack or the charter converting schools are going to lack. So I want us to put our focus on MPS students and see if you can find another means to get the curriculum, the resources, and engage with maybe the foundation, but keep the school intact as they are and just provide more training, smaller class sizes, and more professional development for the teachers and also the parents as well as the students. And that's my opinion. Thank you. This Mr. Watts, I believe you have some information. Thank you, Madam President. Madam Superintendent, members of the board. Um, the, salary, the salary schedule. Um, as you know, consists of a 4% increase. There were no increases of any other steps on the salary schedule, just the 4% that was mandated by the state. Any questions for Mr. Watts? <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Watts about the salary schedule? None. Okay, Mr. Watts. Okay. Madam President, you should have before you the financial statement for the month of July, which represents the tenth month of a fiscal year. I'll be very, very brief. The financial statement uh, should contain uh, the explanation of financial data, which just provides a brief synopsis of our financial position for the month of July 2019. Uh, the definition of accounting terms that provides a brief description of accounting terms that are listed on the financial statement. The snapshot analysis provides a general overview of MPS's financial activity uh, for July of 2019. I will just point out that um, as of July of 2019, as I stated, represents the 10th month of the fiscal year. Um, of course, we were to divide the 10th 10 divided by 12 is about 83.33%. Our expenditures are down about 4%. Our expenditures right now are running about 79%. So that's really, really good. Um, monthly budget percentages, uh, so measurement of uh, revenues and expenditures for the stated month. Also contain the statement of cash flow, which are our funds received and expenditures paid. As of, um, as of, well, several months we have listed on that statement of cash flow. The pie chart um, lists our expenditures and outflows um, of funds that uh, have been extended. And then our health exhibits of the combined financial statements, basically our balance sheet and income statement for fiscal year uh, 2019. I would just uh, state again, Madam uh, President, we're projecting a fund balance of about $16 million um, as of September of 2019. <laughs> which is uh, about a four or five million dollar increase from what we had earlier projected um, at the beginning of the fiscal year. Madam President. That, that's because you have found places to save money. Yes, ma'am. Um, along with the board and the staff, so 
Yep. Yep. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Watts? On page, I, I mean, Madam President, on page five under the budget and the balance, am I reading that correctly? Are we still there? Or have we count, have we rectified that? Or this is just for the last fiscal budget? Um, yes. Roman numeral five. Okay. What What was the question on five? Only my, my, my only monthly budget percentages. Statement, statement of cash flows. Oh, General, yeah, cash I'm, flow. sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't look up there to see it. What, what statement of cash flow. Of course, you see uh, actual July 2019. Okay, That's July. That's the amount for the month. Then the actual year date is the total amount from October 1st to uh, July of 2019. Okay, thank you. Yes, Okay. Uh, one other question, um, and and you can just—it's just something I want you and the superintendent to have a discussion about. I know that there's we start school so early, the buses are hot, and it's getting a lot of buzz in a lot of places. Is there any way that we can look at doing at least starting small, maybe three to five buses, if we can find it in our budget? If it's not doable, you know. Just let us know if it's something that's doable. Um, you know, that, just over the air year, air conditioning. Yes. Yes. There will be. There will be um, in the budget this year for the purchase of four or five buses. Um, and I have to get with Mr. Thornton as it relates to air conditioning. As you know, um, the state of Alabama does not uh, require air conditioning on school right. buses, except special needs buses. It's required on special needs buses. Now, a lot of, as you state, there are a lot of the spill bills, you know, are amongst the state um, to start of providing um, uh, air conditioned buses. From my understanding, I think those buses cost about fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars more. But I will talk with Mr. Thornton about that. Well, one other question: it, to add air conditioning, air conditioners to the buses, what would that? What's an estimate on that? Uh, cost um, to add. Yes. Not really sure. Not really sure. Mr. Thorne, our transportation director, and kind of see what he says about okay. it. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Watts? Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Christy Hatch. <laughs> Everybody can hear me. Good evening. I'm here to discuss the Montgomery Education Foundation's application for the conversion of Davis Elementary, Nixon Elementary, and Bellingrath Middle School. The last time I presented information to this board, it was to let you know that we had released two requests for proposals. One was for a startup charter school, and that application cycle ends on November 30th. And the other was for a conversion school. And that application cycle was an expedited cycle and it was due on September 17th. The Montgomery Education Foundation responded to that RFP and submitted their application by the deadline. The application that the Montgomery Education Foundation submitted uh, contains a plan that has gone through four different reviews. One was by the National Association of Charter School Authorizers. One was by Auburn University. One was an internal review by the State Department of, of Education. And another was an internal review by Montgomery Public Schools. In addition to these uh, reviews, there was also a, a capacity interview that was completed by members of Auburn University, the State Department of Education, and Montgomery Public Schools. The purpose of the reviews, the overall purpose of it, is to determine if the applicant d demonstrates a strong capacity to open and to operate a, um, an effective charter school or schools. And I guess to easier said, it is to review the plan to see if it's a good plan if those people can open and run an effective, innovative charter school. We reviewed the uh, proposed plan in three different areas education program design and capacity, uh, the operations plan and capacity, and the financial plan and capacity. Based on the standards set by the National Association of Charter School Authorizers, the application that was submitted was found to either be partial, to partially meet the standards or to meet and exceed the standards. 
Because of all the favorable foundings in all of these areas, the plan has been found to support the capacity for Montgomery Education Foundation to open and operate the proposed convergence schools. Should this board choose to approve the application, Montgomery Public Schools and Montgomery Education Foundation will then enter into the much more important contract negotiation phase. The two entities would then have 60 days to complete this contract negotiation and then the proposed contracts will be presented to you for approval. Are there any questions? Uh, I actually have a couple of questions just for clarification. Um, it has, uh, to my understanding, this is already a done deal whether we vote on it or not. And that's what I've been told from reliable sources that the charter school, whether we agree to it, fine. If we don't, it will be overridden. So I'm sure Mr. Roller has to override if it should not pass. But you don't have to comment because you would know this. I know this. Um, I don't understand why this is being politicized. If it's something that the State Department wants to do, and I, you're just presenting, but I know there are other ears in the room. If it's something that they want to do, then just do it. Why put us through the, the pump and circumstances of sitting here voting when the decision has been made that the charter schools will come? So my question is not to you, you can't answer it, but I did want the public to understand that this board, because it's been said from the beginning, has no authority. That the authority lies with the state and we are being asked for pomp and circumstance and, pol and to politicize this to vote on something when a decision has been made. And yes, I spoke to Dr. Mackey and his response to my question was, this is something he inherited. So if you inherited it, then surely you can, you know, sit down with this board and have a discussion with us on why um, your, or your reasoning for doing this. I've not seen data that tells us what direction we need to go as far as a charter school. I listened to the young lady um, give her public comments. I have children in public education, traditional as well. Um, every school, regardless of where you put a child, really will have some issues. And I always tell parents, the way you get a good school is you have to participate, be in it, and be a voice. And that's how you get a good school. Uh, I'm an advocate of PTAs because I know that's the voice for parents and teachers and students and everyone. Um, but before they cut me off, I just found it concerning that a decision has been made, right. but yet I, we're sitting I'm here disagree with to you on that. actually have to vote on something. But this was from Mr. Mac. I, I, he called me. Well, I, we have choices here. This board. Has choices. We don't have a and choice. Mr. Mr. Roller does. We don't have a choice. Keep, keep going. Mr. Roller will will eventually not be sitting at the end of the table, and we have our own choices to make. We can make them if we, you know, if they, if the state chooses, they can override us. But I don't think anything's been decided. I'm just simply restating what was said to me, Dr. Keith. Uh, thank you. Um, Madam President, I do want to say this. I, I don't think we're arguing up here at all. Uh, if we can get to, okay. the, 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 the But, you know, I'd, I'd like to, to speak on this. I've talked to, I have not talked to Dr. Mackey. I've tried to talk to Dr. Mackey. I remember the day that we sat in a session where he said he inherited it. I was upset because he did not seem to agree with Ed Richardson, which I did. I don't think, I think when a state intervention decides to cut, you know, let you go, let you spread your wings, we show that we can do something and make decisions. They let us make the decisions every time. Now, if they didn't like it, I agree with you. But to say that they've already gone ahead and made a decision, no, nope, I don't think so at all. 
Now, if I may share my part, I did this and I listened last night. I went to the to the thing and the, the charter thing, and I really went home and I studied this. And I want to I want to make some comments here. Last year's budget was 306 million. This year's budget is 293 million. That's a 13 million dollar difference in decrease. That decrease came from a shrinkage of children. That's 13 million with 500 students. I've also heard 600. We now have 1,179 students that we don't have anymore because they moved. The young lady that spoke about real, real estate, I'm in real estate. We are losing, we are losing the, the, our values to our houses. I want to go ahead. It says we are, um, we are paid per student in arrears. I've already went over 1,179 students. Our motto this year is moving Montgomery forward. I thought about the people that stood up last night and I really thought about their concerns. We had one stand that never once walked through our doors before, the, before we mentioned, ever. Another one who questioned whether or not we were authorizers or not. And do you think we would be here at this table if we were not? The public was not able to ask questions, yet Christy just mentioned four different things that they went through. The same person that brought this up was a person that attended every single charter meeting I've been to for the last five years. I heard it the first time. I heard what charter would do for our children. We've got children 98% that can't read nor do math. Another question whether or not we are, I've gotten off the key, I get excited about this. Another remind us of failing schools label. I appreciate that man who didn't want us called failing school. And I want to remind that man that we don't call it failing schools anymore. We call it priority schools. Yet another stood up and pulled the West Side card, which was alarming to me. Also, that could not stand up for the pledge. Somewhat because it wasn't a month ago, I stood up loud and clear right here in this very room. And I said, hey, take it to the east side. Take it to Morning View. Take it to Chisholm. Take it to Capitol Heights. And three people stood up there and got upset. Even a board member said, no, 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 no. We want it right here. We listened to innocent children speak of firing their wonderful teachers. There's no firing. These tenured teachers can move on to other schools. And new teachers, new breath, will be breathed into that school. That's what charter will bring. Hold on. Nothing. You're fine. Okay. We listened to another speaker. Bring up only char the only charter in this city. We have competed with a bid on a, a prime piece of property that I hope that we got. Mentioned that there were a thousand applicants for 360 spaces. That tells you the interest in charter school because they didn't make it. We also heard these conversion charters will not take money from our system, will not, and, and, and will not take any numbers away from our system. Let's not forget those that are pulled out of our system, the military, the Accountability Act. I have 44 students at Success Unlimited, five of which are in my first period, period class. I have I won't mention names. I had a local column say that nobody came from Nick Eddie Nixon. I took a poll today. 15 of my 44 in my class are from those three schools that we're talking about. I can give you names and numbers, and they'd be glad to come speak and ask if they could come speak tonight. And I asked them, I could, or told them, I can do it well on my own. Let's not forget the military that have pulled out and gone private. We have stood up here for almost a year now pushing a property tax increase because we're only at 10 mil and we need the money. And yet moving Montgomery forward has a grant attached to this for 1.5 million per year. And we can sit up here and say no to 1.5 million per year of 4.5 million minimum. And then ask the public for a property tax? Really? Ladies, I have last question. If we're moving Montgomery forward, what are we waiting for? I left the last argument, question, fact, for those priority schools. Do we not owe our children, our city of Montgomery, charter schools, a chance? After all, it's five years. If we fail, we return to what we have now. All I'm asking you as adults, 
But don't tell our children to come up and speak and say we're firing children. Get your facts straight. Thank you, Dr. Thank Keith. You. There's, clear, uh, there's clearly a case of nothing to lose and everything to gain. Thank you for letting Dr. me Dr. Coleman. <clears throat> well, thank you. Uh, I will say that my colleague, Ms. Smith, probably took a lot of the thunder out of what I wanted to say, but um, I will go back and remind us that a lot of this has to do with actually respecting this board as a board of education. We asked uh, last fall for public forums so that our citizens could hear, understand, and ask questions. Yes, we were granted that forum last night, one night ahead of an expected vote on the proposal. At that forum, the public was not allowed to ask questions. They were allowed to write questions and submit them. And those questions are going to be answered, but those questions will be answered individually, privately. Some of the other people in the audience might have the same question and might want answers to those. When will they hear those answers? How will they know what those answers are? I said that she stole a lot of my thunder. I think I'm going to skip all of that and go to one of my major concerns was the opening of the RFP. I don't understand why we had an expedited RFP. The standalone or startup charters are still able to apply from September 3 to November 30. But if another entity had an interest in doing a conversion charter, they were not allowed because they were only given a two week window. Why is that? And uh, it's basically a rhetorical question uh, because I do support the comments made by my colleague earlier. Thank you. I uh, had a few more things, if I may. Um, one of the things, and I'm glad that I heard about the questions, and Lisa, I mean, at the end of the day, I think we all want the same coming goal, the outcome of excellence for all of our students. That cannot be argued. Um, my question uh, or my concern was the parental involvement piece, and it goes back to in the community involvement. The fact that the people in the room who are going to be impacted by this charter were not allowed to ask questions makes me question how much parental and community involvement will there be? Because first impressions are lasting impressions. If I'm not able to engage the first time, then how do I know that you're going to engage me continuously? My other concern is about the parental, uh, well, the board, their board. Is it representative of the students and the, popula the population of students in this district or the students that will attend the board? I'm sorry, that will attend the school. Um, my other thing was about the expedited application. Um, why was it expedited? And the application, and I don't know if the board gets to review it, but if it's something that we vote on, just like with any other contract, and I do appreciate all the hard work that central office has done to really do their due diligence to make it the best situation possible, I get that. But I will, my question is, why could we not see the um, application? I know also that it was brought up at the meeting that the application was not online and when questioned, they were told that it will get there later. Well, this is impacting the community and if you say it's as good as it is, just show them how good you are, even with the four reviews. Um, losing enrollment since, and I have data on MPS for 25 years, since 1925, I'm sorry, since 1995, Montgomery Public School System has lost enrollment. The constants that have been um, the African American community, they've always remained. There's not been an exodus of many African Americans from this school system. And as a result, and I'm sure that we can trace that all the way back to the times of integration and segregation, and that will tell the story because we have the most private schools in the nation here in Montgomery, Alabama. 
Um, charters can probably do some good things for students, but who else is out there? I don't want to rubber stamp something and I understand their reviews, but with, for me, and you all know how I am about data, I want to know what does the data say? What kind of charter school is going to work if we have to have it for that particular demographic group? And lastly, I'll say this, Alabama ranks 49th at the bottom. If charters are so good, open them up across the state. Ms. Hatch, yes. thank you very, very much. Sure. I, this, 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 this was the messenger, by the way. This was yeah, no, the, the messenger. Oh, we. No, we definitely don't want to shoot the messenger. And I'm not going to belabor this, but the students that spoke last night were brought up. And I have to say, I applaud the courage and the confidence with which those young people were able to get up and speak. Uh, whether or not someone told them to do that or not, I don't know. But one young lady really impressed me, and I've written it down several times. I don't know why I forgot to say it. That young lady made it clear that she understood the need for high expectations. She expressed that the problems they do experience at their school, she is confident that those problems could be solved with high expectations. So, you know, I'm not speaking, and I'm sure most of those who spoke last night, did not speak to say, uh, Montgomery Public Schools are excellent and you all need to leave us alone. That's not the, the point. There are issues, there are issues that must be confronted and we are going to own up to what our weaknesses are. But what we want to do is stop fighting about it, stop pitting one group against another group, get together, bring our community together, improve our teachers, improve our schools, improve our communities at large. We do want high expectations, and uh, I hope that we can all some way, somehow, come together and get there. The other point that I did want to bring up, and I don't even see it in my notes now, is that I went back and looked at intervention because I was not privy to a lot of that information. So I looked at the um, information that's online. A part of the intervention plan included charter schools. That was news to me when I, I looked at that. The fact that in order to correct what's going on in Montgomery, they wanted us to get our money right, they wanted us to get our academics right, and I'm not sure what number it was, but right there in bold letters, charter schools. It's a part of the intervention remedy according to the plan that is posted online. Now, I've, I've been kind of quiet, but I do want to say this. I, I appreciate Erica and, and Brenda. I, I do appreciate where you're coming from. I view this as a golden opportunity that we have somebody that wants to come in and put a significant amount of money into the school and raise the level immediately. Yes, I want to do it for all schools here in Montgomery. There's no question the bar needs to be raised. No question at all. But this gives a little, a little leg up. This is going to put arts and, and music into these three schools. This is going to put some incentives for our children to, to immediately, immediately have a push. And I, I I myself am for any help we can get to move quickly to get this done. So, uh, well, if I go ahead, I well, you know, I I still say, as I have always said, our children cannot wait while we debate. Thank you. We can sit here and talk all evening long, but. Our children need us to make decisions so that they will be able to move forward. And we all are going to have to make some sacrifices. So I truly feel that as Montgomerians, we need to do what is best for our children. The money is available. 
a million dollars. One point five. $1 million dollars per year is available now. And we can debate all day about the rights and the wrongs and what has happened and, and what we think will happen. But we need to service our children now. They have been waiting way too long. As the adults in the room, we need to do what it takes to make sure that our children receive the quality education that they deserve. And if charter schools is it, so be it. We don't know, but we do know that what we have right now is the money to do something that will help improve our children. Well, Madam have, President, Madam I think Chair, we need to, let's go to, the next to item. take the uh, vote. Well, I have one other question before we move to the next item. I heard the 1.5 million. Does that go? And, and, and unfortunately, we have to have this dialogue because there has not been any dialogue. And this is the only time that I'm hearing other pieces being brought in. So I'm asking the questions now. And I was at the event last night at Bellingrath as well. Um, and the, remember, we had we had MEF in here too. Yeah, and they came, but I mean. There seems, so we're not totally ignorant of, of what's well what I'm saying is there seems to be additional information that I'm hearing because this contract has been done over again so I don't know if there's something in addition new beside you know in addition to what they've said okay. or what Dr. Right. Moore? okay so um let me just I'm listening to all of you and I want to see if I can clarify just a little bit uh, first of all what's on the agenda tonight is the approval of an application right uh, the law stipulates how a, an application is to be reviewed uh, by different entities. And so all of the entities that Chris, Christy mentioned went through all that process. And then we also went through the process in looking at the application. Uh, there were some areas that we did not feel were where they needed to be. We asked um, uh, the foundation to go back in and clarify those areas in the application now once the application is approved the reason for the expedited piece was so that uh, with an approved application uh, any entity would be able to apply for the 1.5 million which has a window of October through November so if we use the window that we have in the law that allows you to go all the way through November in order to uh, give them an answer that window of applying for the money would have expired and so they would not have been able to do that mm -hmm. so that was the issue on the expedited part in fact the, the fact that they had already um, <coughs> somewhat vetted an application uh, of course gave them a little bit of a, a leg up on it because they'd already started the process so that is sort of how that piece works but please understand that tonight you're going to be asked to approve the application to be considered as a charter. Then later on, we have to bring back a contract which stipulates all of the particulars of how a charter school should operate if it is approved. The, the, the contract is the really important piece and that has to be drafted, uh, negotiated between the school system and the charter recipient and then approved by the board in order for them to operate within the context of that contract. And so that would be the next uh, major step. But tonight it's the application process, which by law they have uh, to the meeting or exceeding standard have met the expectation of what an application should look like and what it should contain. And am I correct that this step was missed by this, not this board, but the previous board because at that time we were not an authorizer. Is that correct? That's correct. So you did, we didn't, those that were here before did not have this step prior, the prior time around. That's because we were not authorized. Correct. That's, mm -hmm. that's why right. I was that way. And so on, on a personal note, I think those of you who know me, um, I'm, a, I'm a pretty hard task master, master yes. when it comes to reading uh, documents and what's in it and and if I don't see what I need to see in it I, I certainly say it and so when it comes to the contract part of it um, 
we will review the contract based on the law and then we will make um, whatever recommendation we need to make to the board but prior to it coming to the board uh, we will have looked at it and try to uh, bet it thoroughly before we give it to you for any kind of vote at all. So if I'm understanding you correct, the contract piece will solidify whether we really want them. The contract not. stipulates how it or is how supposed to be to executed. Be the okay. application piece says that they have done everything that they're supposed to do to be a, considered as an applicant based on how the law is written. Okay. Any other questions on this topic? Thank you very much. Mr. Mitchell. Good evening. Good evening. Madam President, board members, Superintendent Moore. I am just recommending for consideration the McGraw Hill contract. And I will pass it to Dr. Moore. Okay, thank you. This is um, a company that publishes books and other instructional um, materials. So that is what this contract is about on tonight's agenda. Thank you. First of all, it's, it's a highly engaging uh, integrated program that's adaptive for our students. It's math-based. So the, the purpose of the program is to help our students see what they're confusing and to show through integration what they need to improve upon their math skills. And the only reason I ask is because a lot of our underprivileged students won't have the internet access. So those of us who are trying to support them in the community with um, special programs, tutorials, etc. Would we have access to the licensing? That's all I'm asking. Would we have passwords or whatever? So that when they come to us for support, we can get in and use those same resources. Yes, ma'am, indeed. Thank you. Indeed. We and work I with our apologize partners. for waiting on asking the questions. We work with our partners. Nope. Okay. And then the kids have their own logos. All right. I'm in sorry, there. are there any other questions? I want to entertain questions if any existed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Okay, moving to the consent agenda, Dr. Moore, A through E. Yes, um, we've been asked to um, vote separately on F, so I'm recommending approval of the consent agenda, A through E. Uh, Dr. Moore, and we're gonna, you also we're gonna have pull, this. Oh, okay. Excuse me, on, on uh, the support personnel minutes, we're gonna pull S39. S39. Yes. Go, go. Madam President, I move approval of the consent agenda pulling on B number S39, item S39, and item F. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, show by hands. Thank you. Dr. Moore. Okay. Um, we've been asked to vote separately on F, which is the uh, recommendation for approval of the application for charter approval for Montgomery Education Foundation. Madam President, I recommend to accept the recommendation of our superintendent. 
Okay. On application. On the application. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor by a show of hands, please. Okay. Opposed? One opposed and one abstention. Okay. Um, did you have Yes. Motion carried. Uh, our next uh, meeting will be October the 8th, and we are adjourned.